Hi, I'm Rachel Rudolph, the Extension Vegetable Specialist at the University of Kentucky. And today we're getting ready to do some soil solarization. So I thought I'd walk you through the process. So soil solarization is a way to heat the soil to temperatures that could uh, kill weed seeds, kill pathogens, kill plant parasitic nematodes. It's basically trapping solar radiation under clear plastic and you heat through the soil profile. And if you can get high enough temperatures, you can target those pests and pathogens that um, may be causing trouble in your soil. So soil solarization is not just as simple as throwing down a sheet of plastic, right? Um, there are several steps that make it more useful, more beneficial, more effective um, that we would recommend. And previous research has, has gone through a lot of this. So the first step would be to work your soil pretty well to get out any visible weeds on the surface. So you can see behind me, it's a pretty clean soil surface. Um, the other component is, so that may require rototilling or cultivation. Um, the other component is soil moisture. So soil moisture, you can see probably that it looks pretty muddy behind me. And that is what we're going for. 70% uh, field capacity is what we want. We soak it down through six inches is our target range of soil, the soil profile. But um, so we're, that's where we're collecting this um, soil moisture data. So basically, for those of you who don't have a soil moisture sensor, you're going for kind of muddy. And I can show you a little bit what that would look like, right? So. Right? It's going to be real sticky in your hands, and that's what you want. So we're walking, we have plots set up here, but if you were doing your entire tunnel all at once, you would try to walk along the edge to not compact your soil with your boot prints. As you can see, we have, we're walking around the edges of a lot of these plots. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you don't have a soil moisture sensor, you're going for kind of basically mud, sticky, sticky soil, sticky wet soil. For those of you wondering how to achieve this soil moisture, we personally use drip irrigation and we just laid lines of drip tape uh, very, pretty close together, up, up, about a foot apart. And we just ran the drip tape, ran the drip irrigation for a pretty long time. And we kept evaluating the soil moisture, you know, every few hours. You could also, and that's for uniformity. However, if you're not as worried about uniformity, you could install sprinklers in your tunnel. That's, that's obviously a, an option and um, several growers that we work with have utilized that. For the field, the, the easiest thing to do would be to wait for a heavy rain event. We've recently had quite a bit of rain here, so our soil moisture looks pretty good, especially at six inches. So that's an option. So there are tools that you need to successfully solarize your soil. The first one, of course, is the plastic. So we are using the same type of plastic that you would use to cover your high tunnel, which is that six mil polyethylene. We use this because it's a little thicker and stronger and we can reuse it. It's also readily available. This is the type of plastic that, you know, most growers, most high tunnel growers certainly have lying around. You can use thinner plastic and research has shown success with thinner plastic, but we're using what we have. And um, for those of you wondering clear versus um, opaque plastic, research has also shown that you get higher temperatures with clear plastic. You actually want the solar radiation to penetrate through the plastic. So if you were using black plastic, you could heat the soil, but it wouldn't be as much as with clear plastic. So keep that in mind. Um, also that dark, uh, opaque plastic, if you're using that, that is usually called occultation, which is not exactly the same thing as soil solarization. So the next component, right, we're gonna lay the plastic, but you, what we do is we dig little trenches around the perimeter because you want to be able to pull that plastic really tight and secure it at very close to the soil surface. 
So this goes along with removing the claws, all those extra claws, right? You don't want a bumpy surface. You want a smooth surface. You want to pull the plastic really tight over that surface. And so you'll see um, a little later what that looks like for us. But our, our solution was to dig little trenches and we use hose, just regular garden hose, to dig along the, the perimeter of the plots and that way we can then secure the plastic. Um, and then we use sod staples, which you can you know, buy in large quantities. We use sod staples, uh, staples. again, you'll, you'll see this in uh, a little bit, to secure the plastic. We cover that with some soil. You don't want air getting in. So that is why we're kind of doing a couple of extra steps to secure the plastic and make sure no air gets in, right? You want it tight, you want it against the soil surface, and you don't want any air coming in or out, right? The mallet is to um, hammer in the staple. You may not need it, honestly, but the, the soil may be so uh, moist that you can just push the staple in, but we keep these around after hammering, you know, a few staples, <laughs> you start to uh, be appreciative of the mallet. So those are the tools you need for just getting soil, soil solarization, you know, up and running. Okay, so now you all have gotten to see how to implement soil solarization. So your questions may be, how long do I need to leave this in place? What temperature should I be reaching or hoping to reach? And ultimately, it really depends on the time of year that you're trying to solarize. So um, we have seen really positive results in July here in Kentucky. So for example, in July, we can hit those target temperatures of about 104 degrees Fahrenheit um, within a week of solarizing. And so two weeks in July, you should be good to go. In April, it would take longer. So this project is starting in April. It's 60 some degrees today and overcast, so we wouldn't exactly hope to reach those kind of temperatures, those over 100 degree temperatures um, today. Now, on a sunny day with this tunnel closed up in April, we could most certainly reach those temperatures, um, but the duration would be longer. So four weeks, possibly creeping into, into May at six weeks, um, that's what this project is looking at. So really and truly it, it depends on the time of year. But most mesophilic uh, fungi and other soil-borne pathogens, um, they can be um, suppressed or killed above 104 degrees Fahrenheit, which is what we're aiming for with our particular trial um, looking at sclerotinia, um, effects on sclerotinia. So ultimately it may take some trial and error depending on where your farm is located and what time of year you're trying to do this. Um, and I should say that although this project is in a high tunnel, the process is pretty much exactly the same in the field. Um, the process of covering and um, tacking down the, the polyethylene tarps is exactly the same. And we have also seen success in the field with reaching those temperatures, although the high tunnel environment does allow us to get higher temperatures quicker just from the warmer and protected environment. Soil solarization can be used as an alternative um, management strategy for pests and pathogens. And we'd love to hear how uh, it works out on your farm.